Welcome to Jatai Academy. Today we're going to do a technical deep dive. We're going to focus on one particular technique and really delve deep into what makes that technique important and how to do it really, really well. So instead of focusing on how to do a particular haircut, we're going to focus on the skills that are required for you to be great at cutting hair. So let's get started. To get started with scissor over comb, it's important that we cover the tools that we're going to use. The first thing is the comb. The comb is going to determine how large a section that I'm going to be working with and also how clean the end result's going to be. The closer the teeth are together, the cleaner the result that I can get. The deeper the tooth of the comb, the more hair that I can deal with at one time, hence the larger section that I can have. If I go with a smaller comb, this forces me to deal with almost half the amount of hair and forces me to deal with much smaller sections. And scissors do the same thing. If I have a long scissor, I can deal with a larger section of hair because it can cut more hair than if I deal with a shorter, smaller scissor. So the smaller the scissor, the more detailed my approach is gonna be, the cleaner the cut's gonna be, and the smaller the sections that I'm gonna be working with. So let's start with a large comb and a big scissor. This is the Tokyo scissor. I like it because it's long, and this is a nice, good, sharp, middle of the road scissor that's very versatile for a lot of different things. So we'll start, I'm gonna take the comb, I'm gonna put right in the crotch of my pinky, right here. I'll put my forefinger and my thumb on the teeth and the back of the spine of the comb. I'll wrap these fingers around. And then, using my thumb and my forefinger, I will rotate the comb. This way, it allows me to get into a rhythm as I'm approaching the hair and going to cut it. By holding it here, it gives me a nice rhythm of combing when I'm going down and up. Because what will happen is I'll tend to focus on what's being left, not what's being cut. So if, if the combing is gonna take my attention away from what I'm actually applying, it's not gonna end up being as clean a result as I'd like. I get the comb going up and down. That's first and foremost. The second thing I wanna pay attention to is how I'm holding the scissor. I'm gonna hold the ring between the second knuckle and the third knuckle. Anywhere you want between there. I'm gonna hold this part, the handle, either all the way down at the first knuckle or at the second knuckle, anywhere between there. You have more solid control the deeper that you hold it. Now I'll take my thumb, and if you watch, I'm only gonna rest the inside of my thumb into the ring of the scissor, and I'll push to create tension, and I only move my thumb. I only move my thumb like this, so now, when I'm going to cut, I have one blade being stationary and the other blade moving. Elbows out from my body, comb here nice and solid, able to pivot back and forth, and then a nice, even, consistent stroke with one blade staying stationary. A lot of times if I have too much hair like this, somebody will go through and inevitably start cutting everything shorter before they do scissor over comb. And then they'll lay their comb against the head and cut everything the same length as the comb. All right, that's not what we're gonna try to do. What we wanna do is we wanna approach this with a little elegance and a little bit more refinement. If I'm just gonna cut everything the same length of the comb by laying it against the head, I might as well at that point just use a clipper and put a guard on it and not waste my time and just take the hair off. The whole point of scissor over comb is so that you can have control over your graduation. The graduation is always gonna be shorter around the hairlines as it gradually increases in length as it goes up. Sometimes that increase is very steep, sometimes that increase is very gradual. And it can also not only increase from the bottom going up, but it can increase from the front hairline going back. So I'm three-dimensionally graduating and tapering this section with scissor over comb. If I want to remove this hair, I'm just gonna go through and start crudely taking some of that hair off. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and click the notification bell to be notified of any upcoming future videos. So I'm visualizing in my mind's eye that it's going shorter down here at the bottom, 
and gradually getting longer. Now doing something like this where I'm putting a, a crude application of cut, I'm not moving both the scissor and the comb at the same time. Put the comb in, I'll cut, I'll leave the, what is this? The scissor. I'll go up higher and then cut again. Go up higher, cut again, higher, cut again, higher, cut again. I have not moved this in and out every time that I cut. Stationary, 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 all the way up. So I have sort of a gauge of how far I am away from the head and also how far up the head I'm going. So I'll make my first pass, say it's gonna be five or six sections, right? Just crudely building my shape. Crudely building my shape. And just going back and forth and crudely building the shape. Scissor, scissor, scissor. And the scissor just slowly moves up as the comb goes up. Now the reason I'm doing that is the hair is longer and it's harder to control. It's easier to get a good amount of tension on it by putting it in at the scalp and pulling the comb out. If I'm starting here at the scalp at the bottom and I start to pull the comb out, as I go up, I start to lose tension through here because the hair is longer and it gets soft and spongy at the root. So I need to get it from the root every time as I'm working on hair that's gonna be longer. If it's gonna be really short, it doesn't matter. I just go in and just slowly start to move up. Start low. And work up and out. Please be sure to check out our social media at Jatai Feather. The more times that I open and close the scissor and the slower that I take the comb up the head, the smoother that my scissor over comb is gonna be. Now there's a couple of things that I need to pay attention to. Is I will usually start in the center, visualize what I want that graduation to look like after I've got my crude shape. And once I got everything nice and smooth in the middle with no guide, I have no guide. The only guide I have is in my mind visualizing it's going to be shorter here and it's going to be longer here and working that section up at a consistent angle. After I've got the center section done, I can use that now as a guide for my next section to the right. So now as I go in through here, I see a little bit of my guide through there, and then I match this section to the right to the same section in the center. Another key point that I wanna uh, really, really drive home is that I'm relaxing my body and I'm breathing out as I cut. So I'm gonna comb the hair down, get my comb right, get my scissor right, get my body right, and then slowly start to do my scissor over comb. And I may do a hundred cuts going up this one section, but I wanna make sure that I'm breathing out as I go. And you're gonna say, Russell, that's ridiculous. Why, why I gotta breathe out when I go? Because what I tend to happen is I'm really focused on getting this as perfect as I can. And one wrong scissor move and boom, I've just cut a hole into it. So I hyper focus on what's going on here. And as I hyper focus, I tend to hold my breath. As I hold my breath, it starts to make my hand shake. And I'm not gonna be cutting as clean a line as I want. So a couple of things you gotta pay attention to. Smooth comb from root all the way up, from hairline all the way up. The next thing, soft but strong hands, one blade moving, <sighs> breathe out, relax, and go. And I'm listening for the scissor cutting more so 
than I'm seeing any hair come off. I'm like, I'm looking at this section here and thinking, okay, we've got a little something right there. We've got a little something right there. We've got a little something right there. I can't judge how, what the small amount of hair that's gonna be right there is gonna come off. I can't even measure how small that section is gonna be. So I know if I just trace it, then reassess, that's how I'm gonna to start to clean up my line. If I got a spot that's a little bit too close, that means below it, I gotta take it shorter, change the angle, and come up and out. If I got a part that's a little bit long and it looks like a little lump, I just go through and trace what's already there and just listen right there. As I go up and out and breathe. Once you got the basic methodology of cutting scissor over comb, it strictly comes down to practice. This is an acquired skill and any acquired skill can be acquired by anybody as long as they're willing to pay the price to practice. That's the, only, that's the only cost of admission to being good at this. There's no, oh, you're just born with scissor in your hands. No, you practice it and you practice it and you practice it. When you first start, you're gonna go chump, 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 too short, oh no. I just cut a big hole in it. That's gonna happen. So all that means is because I got this hole right here that I have to take everything below it shorter Come on, baby, shorter. And then once I get to that part, I can start to graduate that out. And now I'm starting to blend that hole out. I've showed you the fundamentals here. Hold the comb proper, twist, right? The crude cut, boom, 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 boom. Get the basic shape in it, then breathe out. Start doing more strokes with the blade, more open and closing on my scissor as I go up, trace the previously cut section, work that up and out. It's all that it's gonna take. Now, as I start to get down here, my comb is too big to deal with it. So I'll go with my smaller comb. If my scissor is still too big, then I go with my smaller scissor. So now I'm forced to deal with a much smaller, more detailed, more fine-tuned section. Eventually you'll get to the point where this will be velvety smooth and perfect. So I think that that's pretty much everything that we need to cover on scissor over comb. Good comb technique, plant in the pinky, back and forth, back and forth. Back. Good scissor technique, with one blade being solid as it's going up the comb and I'm cutting close to the spine. I'm not cutting close to the teeth. I'm keeping the angle of the comb the exact same angle that I want my graduation to be. And also, the more scissor cuts that I do, the more consistent that my scissor cuts are, the smoother that my scissor over comb is gonna be. Helps. I, I sincerely hope that that helps at least give you an idea on how to get started and the things you need to focus on when you're practicing your scissor over comb. Uh, please check out the Jatai Academy. There's a lot of great information on there from whole hair cutting systems to razoring, and there's a lot of really good info on there. Please uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, you know, anything you'd like to see in the future, please do that, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much. As I was finishing this, you know, there were a couple of more points that I thought would really help you in your scissor over comb journey. The first one is dry hair, it's more visible to see the end result while you're doing it than it is on wet hair. Wet hair is much harder to scissor over comb because it's harder to see the end result. And then the other thing is, is in the beginning, you're not gonna be really good at it. So you're gonna end up with some lines and some divots and it's not gonna necessarily be quite as smooth. I mean, I make it look easy because I've been doing it for a long time, but it was not good in the beginning and I had to really work at it. So one of the things that really helped is as I cut everything as much as I could and I got it to the point where I thought, you know, if I keep cutting it, he's, the, the poor person is going to end up bald. 
is I'll get my rough shape into it and then I'll go through with some thinning scissors and just lightly blend the ends in over the whole thing and that will soften up the shape and it will not be as, any of my mistakes will not be as prevalent. So the way that I wanna do that is a very methodical way. I'm not just gonna randomly just shear the hair off and just thin the snot out of it. I'm gonna be very methodical with my application of my thinning scissors. First thing is I'm using my Tokyo thinning scissors from Jatai and it has the tangs on both sides so I can reverse it. I'm gonna cut with the straight blade on bottom, right? That way as I move up the head, each time that I lift up the, the, uh, the tooth blade, it clears the hair out and then I can hit it again without all the hair being pushed down into the blade and me having to pull the blade out and go back in and do thinning like this. I wanna be able to scissor over comb with my thinning scissors exactly the same way and I'm only focusing on the very, very tips of the hair and that's gonna look like this. So I'll go through exactly the same, start on the bottom and then just lightly trace what I was already cutting and go up and out and only focusing on the very tips of the hair. I'm not going deep into it like that to actually thin it. I just want to blend everything through like this. And that's looking pretty good. So a few more pointers that I think help. See you next time.